uh, off a two-week layover. I thought that uh, the first half we were very, very sharp. Um, as a football team, came out with energy and juice, all the stuff that I worried about and uh, was concerned about uh, didn't happen. So I give the, you know, the credit to the kids and our coaching staff who did a great job of preparation. And, uh, you know, we did what we needed to do and uh, we get to, you know, enjoy it for not very long. And then we got to go get ready for Southeast Conference team in Missouri. So. Um, that's kind of where I'm at, so we'll take questions and move on. I don't know how, how like closely you look at the past, but I mean, you know, this is only the, the third time since 2011 they've won four games or more. Um, in year one for you, like, what does that mean to you? Just, you know, giving them that many wins in, in your first year, you know, winning three games in a row? Well, I don't, like I said, a lot of these things I don't really know about. Um, but, uh, you know, I give the credit to the kids, the seniors that have been here. I'm happy for them. Um, I'm happy for uh, the program and happy for uh, Mario to give me the opportunity to hire me. You know, I'm a pain in the butt sometimes, and, but he gave me the opportunity and uh, I'm just thankful for that. But I'm more thankful for the kids and see them smile and be happy. And I like the way our kids go around after the game and. You know, this is a big, you know, it's a big, it's a community thing. And, you know, you got to give credit to Las Cruces and fan, you know, fans coming out and play at 12 o'clock. And, you know, I'm just, the credit goes to all those people. So I'm just happy for everybody that's had to suffer through those things that some of these things are happening. I mean, on top of that, though, this is like, I mean, you talk about building a program and this has to be, in your mind, a big step for the program to have this much success you want, right? Well, you know, you know, I'm gonna be strictly honest when I got here and looked at, you know, you know, where we we're at in the spring and all that, you know, I you know, I said, Hey, I told our staff we gotta worry about those eight things on the board because I don't know what's gonna happen. You know, I didn't know if we could win a game, we didn't win one game and so forth, but you know, the kids uh, you know, bought in. Now not everybody did, but uh, ninety percent of them and you can do that, that's a that's a start and so the kids bought in and, and they're the ones that given us a chance. And, you know, I worried a lot through the, the first, you know, when we got, we went to Minnesota and Wisconsin and those kids get laid down and said, the heck of this, we're going, to, we're going through the same thing. And they did it. And uh, that's a credit to them and the coaches staff that I brought in. Um, they've done a great job of uh, holding everybody in. How much confidence is the success you've had this season kind of give you moving forward knowing that next season you enter Conference USA and, and things kind of change a lot from there? Well, I think I think the, the thing is going to be great to get into conference, number one. Uh, number two, to give administration, Mario and Braun, a lot of credit for getting us there. I mean, you're talking about more money, more exposure. I mean, that's all good. And then for us, you know, preparing is it's good for us right now that we're playing a lot of young kids, but we're only playing them for four games, and then we redshirt them, you know. And uh, you know, like Makai, the running back that was in, you know, we won't we won't play him anymore unless we we have to. But he's going to be a great running back, and uh, you know, so there's some there's some youth that uh, we've strategized with so we can uh, build towards Conference USA, and then you know, uh, our guys. One advantage we had with you know, having two off weeks or whatever it's been, we've been able to recruit for. And so, uh, you never know how recruiting is going to end up till signing day, but to this point, it's, uh, you know, going pretty good and, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But all that stuff that can happen that's positive right now, you know, is good for us. You know, any mention on ESPN, you know, uh, how the attendance has improved it, you know, low number, I don't know, one, two or three in, in the largest attendance improved. and. Um, you know, having, you know, uh, doing this on TV for a great play and, you know, the more we're mentioned, hey, we're on, you know, we're playing prime time against Missouri. You know, first when I seen that time, I go, you got to be kidding me. And then they go, well, it's on ESPN. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, we, that's, that's good for recruiting. So, uh, you know, I think we got some things going in a positive direction. We just need to keep it there. Speaking of recruiting. Uh, following it on social media, it looks like you've you've offered a lot of guys who are currently now in JUCO college, especially ones in, in, in Kansas 
and, uh, and text me. And is is the philosophy right now? Is your strategy in recruiting to? I don't want to reveal any secrets, obviously, but just basically to try to get guys who come in who can contribute right away and, 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 and play right away next year in your first year in Conference USA? We'll do pretty much like we did this year. Yeah. We have a mixture. You know, we've got a yeah. lot of good freshmen. We took some kids out of the portal. We took some junior college kids. And you can offer junior college. We've offered some players, and some of them we're not going to get. You know, yeah. all those offers, if you can get yeah. five of those kids, yeah. that's awesome. So it, it's a deal where – you know, the recruiting philosophy is going to stay the same. You, you, you got to, in this day and age, yeah. you got to take so many high school, so many junior college players, and then you do things out of the portal. Yeah. But if you do things out of the portal, you better know who the coach is. Yeah. Fortunate, I've got four decades in the business, so I know most head coaches. Because I'm not going to, you know, we took Selden for Michigan. Yeah. I called up Jim Harbaugh. He goes, you kidding me? You're the first one that's called me. I said, I want to know about this kid. Yeah. And so those are the kind of guys I want to take out of the portal. Junior college-wise, I've always built a program yeah. where we had some guys that were difference makers and good kids. And that's what we're looking for in junior college and then for them our high school kids. But right now, the high school kids and junior college kids are more available because there's so many people recruiting the portal. Yeah. So there's a strategy in all this and, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, we're doing and how we're doing. It's like the player personnel thing. Yeah. And uh, really, I'm the player personnel guy. I mean, we're in there. You know, on Thursday, you know, hey, okay, got to do this, got to do this. This guy's graduating, and so it's turned into kind of a mini NFL thing, really. Yeah. Were defense was dominant? What stood out to you offensively tonight? Uh, you know, again, until I watched the film, I never commented too much <laughs> on anything. But you know, I think we're throwing the ball better. You know, Diego gave some confidence in throwing the ball. He's finding the open receivers better, and. Uh, you know, I just think uh, the timing was better. You know, I did, a, I spent, <laughs> the official, I know, knew some people, that, I mean, I spent a lot of time on the field, uh, more so than they ever have. And they go, ah, coach, back up. But I wasn't complaining at the officials. You know, I was telling them, like, kids, get going, get in the huddle, play faster, get off the field. You know, so I felt like as a head coach, I had to control the rhythm today. I had to control, I had to, I had to coach with emotion because I need our players to play with emotion. So that was kind of the strategy there. Getting off to the start, you were able to with the, the pick six. Maybe how did that maybe help dictate things for you early? Can't get any better than get the pick six on the first drive. I mean, it, I think it dictated a lot. And uh, you know, uh, you know, we played with extreme amount of enthusiasm. Um, you know, in the first half, and you know, I thought both sides, kicking game, the whole thing, in the first half was very good. And then. You know, we decided to go one more series, I think, with Diego, and, and then we took people out and put young people in and safeties, corners, and and so forth. And uh, they needed to play. You know, they need to play too because a lot of them yeah. are going to be playing a year from now. So, uh, you know, we got we haven't had a chance to do this where we can play kids, a lot of kids, yeah. and uh, that will help us evaluate when we go watch the film. You know, and what we need to do, as you mentioned, in recruiting. Yeah. But we're going to flip it pretty good, I can yeah. tell you. Um, what I mean, flipping, you know, we're, we, I think we got 20 senior, 20 scholarships yeah. right now, yeah. maybe more than that. And there's there's things that will happen through the portal. So we, you know, we'll have another big class. Yeah. Trevor Brohart is a New Mexico kid from Los Lunas. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, his career is winding down. Obviously, how, so how tough was him to see him get him get ejected for targeting so early in the game today? Well, and the best thing was I wanted to know that it happened in the first half because he doesn't get to, he doesn't have to miss the first right. quarter of the Missouri game. Yeah. So that that was mostly my worry there. And then you always feel bad for a kid that plays hard, you know. Yeah. And I'm not ever going to get on a kid that's playing hard. Now, if they play stupid and do something stupid like we had a couple of people do today, they don't yeah. get that same. Treatment. Yeah. Brohart gets the treatment because all he was doing was playing hard, and uh, you can't ever tell a kid not to play hard. So I love him to death, but he'll be fine, and uh, he'll probably play harder, you know, at Missouri, you know. And uh, and but it happens. It happens. A lot of good players in college football right now, and they're gonna. That's why I tell our quarterbacks, don't run around somebody. Just stand in the pocket because if you get hit, you get. Hit. I mean, yeah. you're, you're going to get uh, somebody ejected or whatever. Yeah. You just got to hang in there and be a man. You talk, a little, protect the quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah. you talk a little bit about Conference USA. Obviously, the new media rights deal got a lot of attention this week, especially the 
the all the uh, the coming midweek games next October. So, what are your thoughts on, on having to play midweek games next October? I've done it before. Yeah. No, it's not a big deal to me. I mean, I've done it before, and uh, uh, we won a lot of games in Northern Illinois playing on those days. It don't it don't matter when you play. You know, I I, I just hope that you know everybody in Las Cruces, administration wise, and all those kind of things, all work together. So it's a big, big deal because yeah. you don't want to have, you know, you don't want to have a, uh, your stands with 25 people in it. Right. You know, and uh, so just because it's on ESPN, but you, you can't buy free average. I mean, you know how much it costs to get this yeah. type of advertising? I mean, so I think that, uh, again, the Conference USA, administrators, all those people, uh, you know, have done a pretty good job mm -hmm. of getting us, you know, where we need to be. Um. You coach in the MAC, obviously. Uh -huh. it, seems, it seems like the MAC has turned all those midweek games into a into a pretty positive thing. There's a hashtag MAC action. Also, I mean, they get a lot of positive vibes out of that. I think the Conference USA, USA can, can get to that same point as, as the MAC has done with all those midweek games. Yeah, I think you know, I'm not ever going to put down where I've been or whatever. Yeah. But uh, you know, Conference USA is uh, administrative at the top to the bottom. Yeah. They know what they're doing, and they've been there, and you got some big time people in there, so. I think that's why we got what we got, you know, in yeah. all the, you know, talk and so forth in the contracts and et cetera. Um, Selden left the game and Walker didn't play. Or was it just Meyer? Amari had it. Amari, oh, I Amari. Amari had a hamstring situation that happened on Thursday. <clears throat> and he took the ball. I don't know. He ran it. He shouldn't have ran that far, but he took it about 70 yards for – you know, a touchdown, and, and uh, he was running 22 miles an hour because we keep track of it. Mm. And I thought he wasn't running very fast. So I said, how can you pull a hamstring and not run very fast? And I looked down until you're running 22 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. Um, <laughs> so I, th I hope, I think we can have him next week. And then Selden, you know, he played with a broken hand, but I, I don't understand the injury quite yet, but it's an injury that he had to have a stitch on his calf. And, you know, all I know is he walked up to me he said, I'll be ready to play, coach. Don't worry about me. So that's why he told me when he broke his hand. How do you evaluate Diego's performance today? Well, you know, as far as uh, a couple things that uh, we had uh, major discussions on uh, <laughs> that uh, he, he shouldn't have done. He, I think he did some good things, but he's going to he gonna make sure that he listens to the old ball coach. Yeah. You know, and there's a couple things in there that, uh, you know, I uh, felt that uh, didn't, need to be, didn't need to happen. Uh, but overall, you know, as far as throwing the ball yeah. and running the football team and playing at a faster pace and, you know, getting comfortable, I mean, you know, I think he's um, – this is the last game and a half has made a lot of strides. So today was supposed to be, you know, the last home game, but we'll see what comes in the next coming weeks with FCS and all that. But what have you seen from, you know, the NMSU – you know, community or students, because I know attendance has risen and it's, you know, the football community has kind of risen from past years. So what have you seen or, you know, feeling towards the NSU community or Las Cruces? I love them. I love them. And I, I've said since day one, it's not Coach Kiel's team. I'm just here for the ride and got good assistants hired and I want to see Las Cruces smile and be proud. And, uh, you know, they, they deserve it. You know, they've been waiting on it, deserve it. My job is to make sure I can deliver that. And uh, but uh, the fan support's been great. Uh, the students have been great. You know, she I've you know she I've been out to the tailgate before before the game, check them out, say hi, and so forth. So the student body, the school, uh, the donors. I mean, Las Cruces. You know, I'm a good fit. You know, I'll talk. I'll talk to. I'll talk to a dog on the sidewalk if I want to, you know, I don't, I treat everybody, I treat everybody, you know, just be good to people. And, you know, I enjoy this culture, culture fits me, you know, and, uh, you know, it fits me so good, you know, the guy, you know, did the poncho things for some administration. I got one I wore the other night and I felt pretty good in it too. So if it gets cold, I'm not coaching it. <laughs> you know, where Am I, I going to wear it to the UTEP game tonight? Uh, probably not, not tonight. I don't know if that, uh, I'll wear it tonight. Uh, 
New Mexico is a different story. Yeah. I learned that game. Uh, but uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fired up. Uh, you know about you know a basketball team and what Greg Iyer is doing, and you know athletically she, whew, they're gifted. So uh, you know I wish them all the luck. And uh, you know here's the deal: the basketball team helps the football team. You know, people have been excited around basketball here for a long time, but they help us. They help us in recruiting. You know, you take some kids over there and see that, you know, it helps us. You know, and same thing when he brings kids and those boys, I think our kids run around each other. I mean, you know, it helps us, you know, it helps women's basketball. I mean, so, you know, we're, we're kind of the ones that get a chance to start the season. So, you know, we're kind of front porch, but, uh, you know, we're all working together. We all get along. And, uh, you know, I think that's why that, uh, you know, uh, Mario's done a good job, uh, except for me. You know, I think he's hired good people probably. <laughs> I'm hungry, they're good. I think that's a good south point. What do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like we should send a high note and we're, uh, we're ready to get you on the Utah. Uh, yeah, John kind of shuts me off a lot. <laughs> I think he's afraid what I'm going to say next.